Hello, friends, and welcome to the world of the International Fab Talks. As usual, we are back again and yet with another wonderful celebrity who's joining us all the way from a beautiful state in India, Kerala, a beautiful place called as Palakkad. From there, a lovely little place. From there, sir is taking all the time out to join here with you and with me and share his wisdom. He's been an inspiring icon, not only in the professional space, even in the personal space as well. Let's get to know more about our celebrity and guest he is Mr. A.M. Ramakrishnan, lovingly called Ramki. Now, who is he? Just get to know about it just in a second. Sir, over to you, sir. And hello and welcome to the session. Hello, uh, Crystal. Uh, good evening and welcome to the session too. I'm very happy to join with you. Yeah. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting the invitation to the International Fab Talks. I'd like to thank all of you for being there with us and sharing the contact details of all the right kind of people who share the space here. The main reason is to inspire everyone. Whoever views this video should be inspired, should get something out of it as to how we don't give up in the face of challenges. All of us face it, but how we overcome the challenges, that makes a difference. So here we are having with us Ramki sir, who's going to share all of that. Dear sir, with your permission, I go ahead and share your profile. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My dear friends, I'd like to share the profile of our celebrity and guest. As I earlier mentioned, is Mr. A.M. Ramakrishnan. He has more than four decades, that is 43 years plus of experience in the pharmaceutical selling industry, or you can say the pharmaceutical industry, marketing, and human capital building strategies and tactics. Certain people don't know how to deal with customers. We don't know how to deal with people. People management is difficult. Customer management is difficult. It's not an easy task. But here, sir, specializes in it and has four decades to his credit. And sir was in charge of competence building of field marketing and support functions and factory personnel as well. He has been training more than 7,000 plus people across the globe. And sir is now an independent human capital consultant. Now I repeat that, independent human capital consultant and a business coach. That the cat lies. He's a wonderful business coach. If at all you feel like connecting with sir, in order you want to start your own business, you need someone to guide you. So here is a wonderful business coach. And of course, sir is very selective. Sir has selective clients or he selects the clients. But of course, if you are a genuine person who wants to start a business, definitely sir will get connected with you. And the main specialties are human capital building and competence, building of people to face customers because we have different kinds of customers. Some are rude, some are polite, some are extremely polite and some are both. So that's what my experience says, you know. So it's always good to have all those qualities within you where you can face every kind of customer if you want to start up your business. Now, and sir has lots of time to spare with Rotary International Community Service Projects. Not only that, he's also connected with a beautiful not-for-profit school for special needs children. That's really nice, sir. And sir is a lovely traveler. He loves to travel. Traveling is his passion. And of course, he's joined by his better half on this traveling mission. And sir recently had uh, been to Switzerland and he has broken a wonderful record. Now, what is that? I'm not going to share it. I'm going to keep it a secret and let Sir share that. So friends, when you travel, travel also teaches you a lot, a lot of experiences. You begin to respect other people's culture and, you know, give respect to human dignity and learn to be accepting. That's what we want today because there's a lot of unrest everywhere, everywhere we can't say, in many places, wherever there is unrest, we need to show there more consideration and compassion. Let's learn it from our guest. Join us, friends, to learn more from the professional and personal, personal space. Dear sir, as you say, traveling. I really love to travel and I love solo traveling. Now, let me come back to you and I'd like to ask you this. How would you explain and define yourself? How would you take the opportunity to describe your own self? I've done that from my side. What about you? How would you define yourself? Well, uh, thank you very much for those, uh, you know, uh, broad canvas questions. I define myself as a as a person who is interested in competence building. And I find that there is tremendous potential in people. My firm belief uh, as a coach and as a business coach is that see, when you are an entrepreneur, 
everything that you have can be bought. For example, infrastructure, products, marketing, factories, you know, branding, everything can be bought overnight. You can actually buy them with money. Suppose a big conglomerate like Amazon or a big company like Microsoft comes, they have billions of dollars and they have deep pockets. So they can easily buy all these, you know, with physical money. One thing they cannot buy is a human capital which you have built. So if you build human capital, that is a sustainable competitive advantage. So I always felt that building people is uh, more rewarding. But I have found that during my training career in the pharmaceutical industry and also in the last, you know, uh, so many years, 2014 onwards, I am an independent coach. I find that people potential is immense. So the satisfaction is in finding, you know, ordinary people bloom and become very productive, very happy individuals, very balanced individuals in life. And they live productive, contributing life to the society. So my role is basically as a catalyst to find people with potential, find entrepreneurs with potential who are scared to go ahead and explore the road of business. I help them. You know, I take them to unknown roads in their personal life as well as professional life and I help them perform. So I would say that I am a catalyst and I am a kind of a maverick. You know, my whole life is, uh, has been an adventure. Uh, I've been doing, you know, right from 1980, starting from my job that, uh, you know, I will explain later how my life, you know, took a turn, a 90 degree turn or 180 degrees degree turn in my life you know happened so that's an interesting and inspiring part of i think this this interview that would be very interesting for us to explore how you can really you know pivot yourself if you get uh, very difficult circumstances yes yes you... that's wonderful sir thank you for sharing that's really nice yeah. now as you've mentioned there was a turning point in your life or there was something that really inspired you or transformed you and shaped yeah. you uh, into a beautiful human being. Yeah. Now, if you could share that with us, such that we begin that journey with that strong yeah. uh, lesson that you learned or what you, did you learn from that given situation? See, I, I am an anomaly in the pharmaceutical industry, if, you, if I can say so. In the sense that I had a degree in uh, economics. I am not a pharmaceutical person. I had a degree in economics. And you will rarely find people with arts background, non-science background, rising to the you know top in pharmaceutical industry. That too in training, where you have to train people in technical things. So early, you know, in 1980, I just came out of my college, and I started my career in uh, a small company called Toshiba and Batteries. It was selling the dry cells like Everdy. There was a company called Toshiba and Batteries. I started as a distributor salesman because my uncle was in the marketing department. So he said, you must start learning, selling from the streets. So he put me onto the distributor. I did really reasonably well. And then he took me into the company payrolls in 1980. After six months, 80, by December, I was into the payroll of Toshiba and Batteries. Then... I was working for a small company called Bevit Pharmaceuticals, which is from Goa. You know, that company has a very famous football team called the Salgokas. And the Brahmanand, who was the captain of Indian team, was there from that group. So I was working. It was a small company. I was as a, I, I shifted my, you know, career from battery selling to pharmaceutical. I joined Bevit. So when I, while I was working for this company, I was working very well in coaching as a medical representative, right? Then, uh, you know, uh, I was noticed by many people, uh, a multinational company, I don't want to name the, you know, name of that company, multinational company's regional manager, uh, a gentleman, a very senior, uh, respected person, came to the room where I was staying in Cochin. And then he said, uh, Mr. Ramkrishnan, we get very nice reports about you in our company. You know, we have a vacancy as a representative in Cochin. And would you join? I said, I'll be very happy to join because yours is a multinational. So he said, from this present company, you can give a resignation letter. And then, you know, you will be joining. I uh, 
you know, my advisors told me, don't give your resignation letter unless you get a joining letter or an appointment letter. So I was waiting for that letter. One week, two weeks, three weeks passed and nothing happened. Then suddenly I found that for the vacancy of that multinational company, another person had joined in that place. So I just checked with that person and then he said, uh, Ramki, this person, this person who recommended you fought with the HR department. They wanted to take you in, but they have a very strong policy saying that they will take only science graduate. They will not take arts graduate, right? So, you know, my, uh, I was very dejected. I was way down. You know, there is no way to break the glass ceiling. I thought, then I had a very good friend called Ramesh who was working at that time in a company called Boots, which is a multinational. The so Ramesh said, don't worry. See, basically, ultimately, it is an issue of knowing anatomy, physiology, pharmacology. So he presented me a book, Anatomy and Phys Physi Physiology for Nurses by Evelyn Pierce. 57 rupees. He donated that book to me. I took three months to buy heart that book end to end. It was all anatomy, physiology. I took three months. And then a multinational company called Win Medicare. At that time, it was Sterling Winthrop. It was the biggest company. They came for an interview in Cochin. So what happened was that uh, uh, this Ramesh recommended me in the company. I went for the interview in Casino Hotel in Cochin. And the training manager at that time was one Mr. Uppal. We came from Sandoz, India. I stood number one in the interview. I was very good in anatomy physiology because I had mastered that book by that time. And then he looked at the marks. He said, impossible. How can an art student do this well? And then he tried his best to ensure that I was rejected. But I said, sir, see, you asked me about gastrointestinal system. I can I can do it better than any science graduate. So my vengeance was that I will break the glass ceiling. And if it was just anatomy physiology, I took about, it took, took me about three months doing. Every day I had to put three months of, you know, writing down. Each terminology was difficult for me. I had to start from pH, the hydrogen ion concentration. I went to school children who were studying chemistry. You know, they told me what is hydrogen ion concentration because I was not a science graduate. Then they told me what is bromine, chlorine, fluorine, you know, the halogen family. I learned all of that with a vengeance. I said, I'm going to break this glass ceiling and I'm going to get into a multinational company. After that, I never looked back because I went into WinMedicare. I joined the training. That was in 1983. I remember it was a very cold, you know, October uh, day in Delhi. Delhi is very cold. You see, for Southeast, any temperature below 15 degrees is winter. You know, all the woolies come out and Delhi was a minus seven, right? So I stood number one in the training program and I, I did very well in that Medicare. I was a representative only for two years, three years. Then I became a frontline manager. Then I became a second line manager. As a regional manager, I was covering from Eero to Cochin. I had about, uh, you know, uh, 24 representatives. I had, you know, so many stockers. I had a target, like everybody else. Uh, it was very challenging. But then something really happened because then the sales manager of that uh, uh, company, Win Medicare, Mr. S. S. Arora, uh, he was noticing one thing. Whenever there is a promotion interview in Delhi, because it is a national company, he found that a lot of people from my team were going for interviews. So he was wondering how this is happening from one corner of India, that is from Eero to, you know, from Salem to Trivandrum, from a regional manager's area. We have promoted about eight people in the last two years. How is that possible while we are struggling to get people? Then he came down and then he said that you have a flair for training. Because what we did was during our meetings, we have sessions to train people. And then we have sessions for people to take, you know, uh, sessions by themselves. So at that time, I am talking about 1980, 81 itself. I had a flair for finding talent, spotting people, you know, telling them you can do well, you can become promoted. So Mr. S. S. Arora said, we don't have a training department. See, ours is just a small company, 70th position in India. We are hardly about 30, 40 crores. So we need to set up a training department in Delhi. Would you be interested? But he said, training in the short term does not pay. Whereas sales in the short term pays very well. You get incentives. Your salary will be very low initially. But as you grow, 
you will probably do better than all the you know sales managers etc etc from the commercial people i said i would love to train people so he put me as a regional training manager in the in the in the year of 1991 in bangalore we set up a small training setup in hyderabad i used to come to abids you know you know hyderabad very well so abids was our training center then we set up the first training department in delhi then i went to delhi hemkund tower was our office then i worked in intas i worked in that company win medicare for 14 years 14 long years so that was a turning point so my message is that you are only limited by your motivation to do what you want in this world if you are motivated you can do anything you can learn anything science is not a problem age is not a problem because only 2 years back i took my msw you know i took my degree long back 2 years back somebody said can you still learn because uh, this uh, online bharatiya university msw is there i said anyway i am doing social work because social work is my passion also for 10 days i work for my bread butter and jam and then 10 days uh, you know 15 days i work for the society so during the social work last 4 5 years i have been doing the same thing so once you convert the theory into practice then i must believe is what i am doing every day so i took my degree so my point here is a human being is only limited by the motivation not by resource not by time you seek it the world is ready to give it to you so this is my resounding message to people that if you want to do it the world will conspire to make you successful so this is what i want to you know communicate to all the people who feel that the walls are shrinking everybody is against me nothing against you the whole world will if you really go ahead and then try the world will conspire to make you successful right yes those words were magical sir yeah very magical and it's very true if you believe in that it, it's very true it's going to become a reality my dear friends don't give up on life just do your best and everything will fall in place very soon absolutely yeah yes so that's wonderful thank you for sharing that beautiful journey of yours sir yeah. so now i'm really excited to know about your traveling journey yeah. and you've been to switzerland and most of the people including me we would love to visit switzerland at least once in our lifetime okay. you've been there and you've been achieving a record breaking a record and all of this happened in a very short span i I've, i've got to know that just in a very few days you've done that you were there staying there i think in, in 31 hours i'm not even days it's hours 31 hours you've done that on all of it you just went to spend a few days there but during that stay you were able to overcome this beautiful you know break this record shatter this record now how was this possible uh, and how later but why did you take up this challenge yeah what made you take up this challenge see uh, i think potential is not uh, very useful you know it is like gravity you know that you know you put a you, you put a, a thing on a table that you know it is gravity but unless you let it fall you don't know what gravity is you know potential is like gravity all of us have potential to explore the unknown self right from uh, you know my what you can say amdabad days i was there in a company called intas i joined in 1987 every year we used to take with family about uh, during diwali maybe you would know that the entire gujarat is shut down 80% of the population travels and most of the gujaratis are big travel uh, you know affectionados they are travel freaks right so entire gujarat will be closed so we used to take our car and then travel for three weeks all over india so with my family there is no place we are not gone from every nook and corner of india we have traveled and traveling you know became a passion number one number two i wanted to show my children you know what the actual india is it is not just a metro city that you see it is not the glamour and bliss that you see the actual india lies in the villages right so when they get educated when they become maybe marketing people when they become professionals unless they understand the ground reality of life they will live in glass ceilings you know they will not really understand what life is all about how hard life is in the villages how people struggle and when you travel we find that it is the biggest teacher in the world 
right my children could you know if you say sri ganga nagar my child you know my children my children are very very old now i mean I, i mean they are older now not very old my eldest son is 32 years and married in bangalore my younger son is uh, uh, he is in uh, bangalore because their general knowledge was much beyond the normal people because i was i made it very clear to my wife and to the children that every year we must travel two three weeks in a in a year because that is a whole university out there a traveling is a university number one number two it creates a bonding with your family so my recommendation is for everybody out there every at least one or two weeks in a year they must travel and use the ltc rather than in cashing many of the people in government you know employees as well as private people you know they encash their ltc once in two three years but i think that you must spend because it is an education you will not get otherwise and traveling really opens vistas which you know no education no uh, profession can do so this was uh, a, 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 a what you can say kind of a bug in my bonnet me and my wife both of us drive so that is why we could uh, you know do this feat i am coming to the swiss part because let me tell you you know where the bug bit us and every year we used to travel then i i am part of a traveling group you know we have a target group of about 3 lakh people you know many groups are there in facebook then from 19 2005 onwards we have a group of about 3 lakh people in many groups so we interact and then we talk to each other so india you know being what it is uh, many of our friends keep you know breaking records so uh when we travel abroad see we are done uh, every year about 3 weeks we take off uh, during diwali i accumulate all my leaves i hardly take any leave my wife also was a teacher there she also takes hardly takes leave and then even if we lose you know some money you know uh, on on our salaries we stretch it to 4 weeks in a year during diwali october every year you know we take 3 weeks is normal 4 weeks is on and off we take then during you know during the year when we get about one week breaks etc then also we travel we never stay at home so we traveled you know during the last uh, you know 20 years we we are done uh new zealand the first thing we did was new zealand we do end to end one end to another of the country geographical ends we do we did a complete circumnavigation of ireland all around ireland we are driven but we are not set to record because at that time we did not know record setting was possible because this india book of records was not so popular at that time otherwise you know i should ideally be having a record for new zealand i should be having a record for uh, ireland then we are done an end to end in uk that is one end of uk to another and then when we went to switzerland last year that is september we were going basically it was a holiday trip but then as you know i am also involved with the rotary movement the rotary movement basically is a is a service movement which helps people who are uh, not so fortunate as far as finances are concerned so rotary helps them and also a lot of social causes are taken up by the rotary movement so i am in the in the in the committees of many of these so our movement is spread all over the world so when i go to europe we meet the you know brotherly sisterly rotary clubs and then we do our presentation of for example our september trip we went to italy we went to austria we went to switzerland we went to france for about uh, one month we were there and during that time only in switzerland we could break that record so during our travel we met many rotary clubs and presented because we have a river called bharatpura here which is highly polluted so our project was basically to set up a data center so that the river pollution could be monitored and we wanted partnerships from clubs you know rotary clubs from europe so we went seeking partnerships so somebody said that you no know, switzerland nobody has done this uh, travel switzerland has four corners east west north south like any country if you do a google you can find out in many countries you know which are the extreme points in that country geographical points so we googled and then we searched uh, research found these four points one extreme point is a place called uh, val mustir nobody goes even swiss people don't go there surprisingly it's a village of 
hundred and twenty people only. The population of that Val Mustir is it's a it's an awesome beautiful country. Not many facilities, just one or two hotels. So we entered Val Mustir, you know, and then we stayed there. There is a there is one or two hotel. It's a one house town, as they say. So we entered Val Mustir and then we hired a car. Of course, we hired a car from Italy, dropped it back to Italy, Milan. So we started our drive, you know, which was an exciting drive. And then we touched the uh, southernmost point of Italy, a call called a place called Pedrinate, which is near Lake Como in Italy. Uh, whatever is the reason, we generally don't drive at night. After usually 8 p.m., we don't drive because it's risky an unknown country or known country, we don't drive because it is not worth taking that risk. Then we touched the northern place, a place called Rhine Falls, Schaffhausen, a place called Schaffhausen. So we stopped there for the night. Otherwise, we could have done this record in 24 hours. The next day, early morning, we started from Schaffhausen and then we came to a place which is the southern end of Switzerland, a place called Chansey, a border between France and Switzerland. So we could do that in 31 hours and uh, you know nine minutes, which was a record. And this agency, which does the record validation, called India Book of Records, they ask a lot of records, a lot, lot of validation. For example, you need to produce the petrol bill by the time you start. You need to have a geo-coordinate recording camera. You need to have a drive camera record, the roads, etc. So all that we had. So we, we wherever on the way, when we have lunch, dinner, fuel, and all that, and the geo coordinate, you know, with uh, with uh, with evidence, you have to submit it to this uh, India Book of Records, and then they validate it, and then they give you a certification. So that is how we got certification. So we are now enthused. Next month, that is uh, April twenty seventh, we are leaving for Spain again. So Spain is four times as big as Switzerland. So Spain is also our uh, idea is to meet many Rotary clubs, sister club, brother clubs. Again, for the river project, we will do presentations and we'll seek partnerships. And also we will set a record. I think Spain being a bigger country, it will take us four days to reach four corners. The challenge in, in Spain is little more because some of the roads to those corners are basically rocks and only lighthouses and they don't allow car. So we'll have to stop the car, truck probably three, four kilometers to those points and generate evidence. Uh, but we are excited. We are going to do that maybe in a month. So this is the bug. The bug that Bitters is uh, basically traveling. And during traveling, you know, we found that uh, every day is full of surprises. You know, your life is so short and your life has to be full of experiences, new experiences. For example, Spain, Spanish is new. Last three months, me and my wife, we are learning Spanish. It's a great experience because the internet allows you to learn so many things free of cost. It's a, it's a global university out there. You can do so much with the internet. So this is the bug of traveling. And I think all of us must get bitten by the bug. At least two, two weeks in a, in a year, you must travel. It's a university there for you to learn. So this is my take on traveling. Thanks for that question. Yeah. Wonderful, sir. You took yeah. me on a beautiful journey. That's really very nice. And as you said, the bug has bitten you and you are on that beautiful mission of traveling across the world, not only to learn, but to even interact with people, to get help, to give help, you know, to bond and to network. That's really nice. Yeah. I really like it. So now the next question coming up, sir, with, yeah. with regard to your early childhood. What kind of a childhood did you have? A happy one or one with lots of ups and downs? See, we, we come from a, 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 what you can say, agricultural family. My grandfather was, uh, at that time, they are called Adhigaris. Adhigaris had revenue, police and uh, judicial powers. We had a lot of lands. Right? But when the government made a legislation, that is a communist government in Kerala, they took away most of the lands of people. I don't know whether you are aware, but the history shows that a lot of us lost lands. My father was a landlord. Suddenly, he had to work. right? So during my childhood, it was just an ordinary childhood. I was in a very small village in Palkar. And uh, there again, you know, 
there again i was lucky in my life i think i have been getting chances uh, the word lucky is many time misconstrued i think my definition of lucky is when talent meets opportunity you become lucky it is not that you, know, you are just lucky and then you are with a silver spoon no very few people have that you must have the innate passion you must look out for opportunities and then when they get a chance you grab it you see that in life many people even when they get the chance they don't grab it so my definition of luck is when talents meet opportunity you become lucky i was in a i was in a very small village in palakkad but uh, providence was with me i would say luck or whatever you say opposite to my house in the village a great man one of my earlier influences in life moved in from mumbai he was a retired professor from naval college lonawala his name is professor dattatreya he is no more late professor dattatreya he moved in because after his retirement he wanted to come to a village and then when he moved in half his truck was full of books half his truck was full of, full of books and i used to you know visit him and then he opened his what you can say world of books to me i was le- i was learning in the regional language malayalam medium and then my reading i started from any blighton which many of the people would have started then a a a, a author called w a johnson biggles then you know like author haley james hadley chase all those so though i was in malayalam medium i never had difficulty with the language because my vocabulary diction syntax everything was built because i started reading quite early then another very very lucky thing happened to me this person professor dattatreya was a radio buff was a radio buff in the sense that a very very strange hobby called dxing which not many people know of dxing is listening to radio stations which are all over the world so my house we had a old murphy radio so professor dattatreya told me how to create an antenna so we created a 60 feet long antenna we could reach all the stations in the world so i could listen to bbc radio berlin radio australia very you know radio luxembourg and i was i was in touch with the world even during my childhood and in my village people used to say this guy is crazy you know i was little kind of a quixotic kind of a guy and my ideas were a little weird i used to you know conduct exhibitions of uh, what you can say uh, scientific exhibitions with i used to call professors all that because professor dattatreya opened that you know what you can say window of wonder to me so my early childhood was a little exciting uh, though it was ordinary a uh, lot of ups and downs because of uh, you know financial constraints of the family but then we persevered because uh, you will see that all over the world farmers who have background of farming they persevere because the law of the farming is basically is not overnight gains the law of the farming like kobe said that the you know, law of the farming is basically you plan you have to make the uh, make the uh, you know uh, g- make the ground ready you have to water you have to manure and you have to wait so village life teaches you a lot of patience so my life early childhood was a little tremulous because i was not a normal normal guy but then i transitioned from a regional language to a english medium in college quite quickly so that is how my childhood was yeah a lot of memories there thanks for the question yes very interesting very very interesting i like the antenna yeah you could you know get access to all the radio stations across the world yeah. and keep yourself updated i love the way you shared your exhibitions that you conducted and like a bit different from others yes unique in your own way so you know your uniqueness is your speciality you should be unique everyone including me every one of us as as you said that you know coming from a farmer background you have this perseverance to persevere not to give up to keep trying and trying be consistent in your efforts yes. don't lose heart that's really nice so now with regard to forgiving others like you yeah. might have seen many people might have 
hurt you intentionally, unintentionally. It could be your near and dear ones. It could be your friends. It could be strangers. So what does forgiveness mean to you? I think uh, there is no space or time in our life for permanent enmities. There is no, we don't have the time for permanent enmities. I learned early in my life uh, that, you know, uh, keeping permanent, what you can say, enmities with people doesn't really, you know, uh, give, uh, what you can say, mileage. Because I had a team of 24 people in Kerala. And in Kerala, it was a highly unionized place, if, if you know. Even uh, medical, I was a manager, very senior manager, and we had a lot of unionized, uh, you know, friends, comrades in Kerala. And uh, uh, many of them are sometimes very rough to you. But as you grow old, you know, you understand that it is because not because of their personal vengeance or grudge. It is because, you know, they have to cert certain times act aggressive. And then the same people uh, who were aggressive to me, subsequently I had promoted them. And they become union leaders because they have certain capacities. Otherwise, you cannot become leader. And that capacity, if you can leverage for organizational benefit, that would benefit the organization. So many of those people, you have, I have counseled them. I said, you have fantastic leadership capacity. You are rude to me. That is okay because I don't take it personally. Because there is no space for permanent enmities in life. That actually helped me in corporate life. Because when I went to Delhi in Winmedicare, it was full of, uh, you know, Punjabis at that time. A Saudi is not very much accepted by, uh, you know, those crowd sometimes, sometimes. Some of the people were very hostile. But then I never showed my hostility. I kept focusing on my job. Subsequently, the same thing happened, you know, when I went to, uh, I joined a company called Intas Pharmaceuticals, which uh, uh, actually helped me grow. It gave me a fantastic platform. 1997, I joined the company, spent 18 years there. I started as a representative, I started as a training manager and then retired as a senior vice president. We built that company from 300 crores to 5,000 crores in 18 years. When I joined, it was hardly a 300 people and 370 crore division, crore company with three divisions. When I left, I was in charge of 4,000 people in, in, in India. 20 training, you know, team of 20 people, three factories, etc., etc. So during my corporate life, I found that uh, corporate life is a, a, a corporate, uh, you know, uh, culture is a place full of superannuated egos, I would say. There are a lot of division heads, people who handle, because, for example, I had 18 divisions. Some divisions were hardly 60 crores. Some divisions are almost 600 crores. The people who are chiefs of those divisions, they are clients to me because I had to advocate my training packages to them. I had to convince them about the ability of the training, you know, programs. I had to convince them about the uh, uh, about the efficacy, the need for training, you know, different levels. I had to convince them about budgeting, marketing, budgeting allocation, and not all of them are open to training. Some of them, you know, used to shut down. My proposals right out of the window. So permanent grudges, you know, uh, could never win them. Slowly, it is like, you know, water on rock. So you have to slowly, you know, whittle them. Slowly keep on telling them, demonstrating to them. Because you have to be an advocate. See, when you head a training department, mostly I find that, you know, the, the HR departments uh, are there. That is fine. But the training departments don't sell the training function properly. It is your job to advocate the training function also properly. You have to uh, tell them this is a return on investment because the training measurement areas, you got to tell the stakeholders saying that you know, learning, reaction, then application, then return on investment. All these you know, four areas of training uh, evaluation, you got to tell them very clearly how training will benefit. So you have to be an advocate. So sometimes I do many proposals even today to many clients, you know, clients said, uh, many of the clients say that, no, you just, at the end of the year, we have some budget spending. So why don't you come come and do that? But I said, sir, sorry, I don't do that kind of training. You know, the front end training only, I don't deliver anymore. Because 
unless your client is committed to building people building human capital uh, you cannot really do productive work because your brand suffers if you just do front end training as a trainer everybody says it is fantastic training at the end of the day what did they implement what did they take home what is the return on investment you can't measure with just one or two training programs so i touch clients only who have a little bit of commitment so if they commit for one year with me okay then i take those clients i don't take you know fly by night kind of training programs because that actually depreciates my brand i find so uh, this has been the the exciting part in training right and uh, i think the hr professionals should commit to training and selling the training function i am very passionate about that and i am very happy that the company where i worked with in intas 1997 onwards 2017 the directors were very committed to training it is one of the few organizations who are training directly reports to the directors not to the marketing people so for a long time i was reporting to the stakeholders and they were very firm on training so unless there is executive will at the board room level that training must happen no change will happen you will just have you know functional trainings you will just have calendar training but that will not really uh, transform into productivity if you take the company where i worked in indus just an ordinary company 350 crores at the time 300 people but then a lot of money was spent on training lot of commitment no representative ever touched a customer without training no manager ever touched a frontline person without training no second line manager ever touched his field force without training every year six days of training was mandatory that is because there was a training will and the directors sri binish bhai sri nimish bhai chuggas the chuggas are very strong on training even today that is how they have zoomed the position you can see from the uh, 13th position where i was there in 2017 to the 6th position all india it's a great company with uh, great leaders and a training vision and uh, and a marketing vision so it has been a it has been an exciting journey in pharma yes Excellent, sir. That's wonderful, yeah. sir. That's really very nice. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Sir, may I now know your thoughts on friendship? What does friendship mean to you? How many of your friends have stood with you with you through thick and thin, and how many of you have been backstabbing you? It could be either <laughs> of the ways, the positive and the negatives of friendship. You could share, sir. See, friendship uh, is a two way, two two way. Uh, I think street. Uh, I have a lot of acquaintances. i think we all have a lot of acquaintances people we know but if you ask me true friends only a, a handful maybe four five friends i consider friendship like this you know a true friend is someone who will suppose i say that i have lost everything i don't have money right i need to stay in your house for a month if you have one or two persons who will do that for you you are very lucky and he is your friend in a world full of expectations a friend takes you in for what you are friendship so if you have those kind of people i think i have two or three people in my whole life could be able to take me in backstabbing as you asked a lot of that in my corporate life and even today a, a lot of you know backstabbing in 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 my what you can say consultancy happens people steal your ideas they uh, take your speculative presentations and then they present it to their company and then say it is their ideas but ultimately i am happy i i help somebody i don't i don't uh, generally hold back saying that this is half the package i say that i'll i'll completely display the whole package if you feel like it you tie up with me otherwise at least you build your training function in your company you have training department okay so backstabbing happens but i strongly believe in goodness goodness exists in this world that's the reason why we have a sane world why we have still a peaceful world relatively peaceful world where you and me can live with uh, relative security relative stability otherwise if goodness is not there at all in this world you just imagine it will be a dark fearful and a very very what you can say frightful world a fantastic world to live in so i think goodness exists so you 
have to help people knowing that some of them maybe you know two or three of them out of 10 will backstab you but generally people are good you touch their goodness and i i think the karma i strongly believe in karma you keep on doing it the good karma will come back to you that is what me and my wife we believe because we run a school for autistic children my wife has been doing it as a not for profit center we have 60 children all from uh, economically backward families and the tragedy about special children autistic children is that the fathers run away leaving the mother and the child this is a tragedy so we we don't take in very rich people in our school who can afford we generally go out and i am very happy to say that many of the corporates have supported us right because our books are open we don't make any profit out of it my wife drives 70 km drives 70 km every day to go to the school and come back but i think karma has come back because our children are relatively good our bread and butter is taken care of and we are in a relatively happy place because we have moved deliberately from amdabad to a very small place in palgad 30 km of palgad but the air we breathe is pure the water we drink is fantastic and i can feel the grass under my leg without chappal i can walk and then you know i can feel the grass so it's a deliberate decision but then the airports are just one hour away i go to mumbai in the morning and then come back in the night because paimbutur airport is hardly one hour away i still have clients you know i service uh, throughout the world in fact and you you see we are doing this uh, from hyderabad to a village in palgad because internet is available so backstabbing people will be there in your life but you always believe in goodness i think we must believe in goodness it is very important for the world not to believe in the dark side to believe in the white in the, the fair side so this is my take on uh, backstabbing yes well said sir well said that's really nice and it's a very positive aura that you've been sharing a positive vibe and positive energy not to look at the negative side but to focus on the positive side yes so now is there anything that angers you you've been 43 years plus as a professional you might have seen so many things yes ups and downs on the personal and professional front yeah i'd like to ask you is there something that angers you when you see things around you are an uh, you are a wonderful traveler too you love traveling you might have seen many things many experiences or just maybe you when you look at something that doesn't that disgusts you that doesn't make you feel good from within so yeah. is there something that angers you the most what uh, uh... you know i am a very structured person because i like everything in its place you know i am a very structured person but over the last 20 years i have learned that you know not everybody is like me people are little non structured because they don't behave the way you want they don't respond the way you want and uh, they don't put efforts the way you want so you have to have a lot of patience with people but what angers me most is when i see somebody with tremendous potential deliberately destroying themselves not trying their best you know the power within the human being is immense this is what i said that no any if you you can buy everything you know a competitor if if they can they can nullify all your pluses overnight with money they can buy they you know technology shares they can buy your factory they can buy your products but the potential in a human being they can't buy overnight it is it is very difficult actually the people just don't walk out of one company to another you know they still have bonding so what angers me is when for a human being deliberately destroys his own potential even after telling that person boss you have to keep on trying you can do this you can do this and the person says na na i'll be i'll be like this don't don't trouble me that really irritates me a lot but i have come to terms with that some people just are happy the way they are second thing that really nowadays irritates me is the way we destroy our environment because this is the only environment we have we throw waste everywhere plastic is everywhere it is in the water we drink we take in at least you know one credit card worth of plastic every week in the water we drink microplastics we ingest and uh, we are not really bothered because water is becoming scarce air is becoming polluted and this is the only house we have which is the world 
and we keep on polluting it without any thought that really you know uh, gets to me and everywhere we you know we go uh, you know it is a project uh, where we work in the rotary of uh, uh, enhancing people's awareness about plastics enhancing people's awareness about environment so that is what really irritates me the way we throw waste everywhere the way we disrespect environment and expect it to be very kind to us you know so we really need to teach our children the new generation to respect the environment because this is the only world we have and we keep on polluting it how long will the world take 800 crores of people in this world and then we keep on uh, uh, polluting it just just doesn't doesn't work in the long run so we have to be respectful to nature i am i, I am getting more and more irritated i am not saying angry i get very irritated in fact i go out and i see sometimes you know people throw while driving through the car door bus doors they just throw the bottles they just throw plastic so wherever possible i just show them you know my hand like this and uh, when possible when i can talk to them i tell them boss don't do that put it in a in a piece of uh, what you can say bag and then dispose it properly because this is not done right but i am very happy to see that the younger generation has taken taken up the clarion call for protecting the environment which is very very encouraging most of our programs in school we find that very open and then we tell them that you now three or four ways to save water the children go and tell the parents papa you know we have to listen and then see whether you know anywhere tap is leaking at night when everything is quiet just keep your ear uh, you know near the flush socket and then see if it is leaking if it is leaking call the plumber because you are losing money because you are paying for the money for the electricity so it is money saved also water saved for humanity and then wherever there is a tap open they close it so we teach them and the younger generation they take it up which is very encouraging to see they drive against plastic we are getting a lot of traction and momentum yes that what that what irritates me yes that's wonderful for sharing all of that to saving the environment with regard to plastic to save water and people who are just relaxing and not using the talents or utilizing the talents within them you know yeah. that really also angers and irritates me too yes we all have to do that get up yeah. and do something positive not to just sit down and let that beautiful talent within you get wasted yes yeah. so now we have a small segment called as the rapid fire round okay we'll take another 10 minutes sure with the yes sir thank you very much you've yeah. been sharing your time so well and i'd love you to share more time with us in the next in the few coming days in the coming days like i would like to have another one or two sessions with you more share session not one maybe two three more sessions with you because you have a lot to share there's a lot of wisdom within you to share sir sure yeah yes sir. now so we go ahead with the rapid fire round it's a very brief round which is for just 10 minutes okay yes sir so your favorite movie uh favorite movie is world's fastest indian i must have seen it 50 times world's fastest indian can i explain a little bit about the movie yes please uh it is actually a real time movie about a man who is 60 years old who wants to break the world motorbike record and he is a very poor person he lives in invercargill new zealand and uh, he was uh, uh, anthony hopkins acted in that movie and he uh, depicted that person i went all the way to new zealand you know to see this person's place invercargill and the, the 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 indian bike which did the record it is still an unbroken record it's a movie that will make your hair stand up i show it to all my trainees i say that a 60 year old man with benign prostatic hypertrophy with just the dream of breaking the record who goes all the way to usa from the end of the world and breaking the record it's an awesome movie everybody must see it's my most favorite movie it's an awesome movie yeah yes. thank you for sharing sir thank yeah. you yeah. what about your favorite breakfast my favorite breakfast is uh, uh, fruits then we have dosas idlis in south india and uh, uh, maybe i will have a, a, a you know a 
cup of coffee yes milk. or milk yeah wonderful your favorite season sir my favorite season is october october november which is diwali time we have been traveling during that time when the weather is kind all over the world and it's a shoulder season abroad in many of the places where your your rates are the lowest crowds are the lowest it's a shoulder season september october is a shoulder season yes yes your favorite color sir blue i go for blue yes if you were given a chance to relive somebody's life whose life you would relive oh i would definitely relive professor rishi kumar pandya's life because he was another you know formative influence in my life like mr dattatreya two people really changed my life rishi kumar pandya was a trainer and uh, and uh, and a mentor what you can say a coach he was based in mumbai and a phenomenal person he has touched so many lives changed so many lives he is also no more and he married uh, uh, the uh, annapurna devi who is a veena specialist she is the wife of uh, you know ex wife of pandit ravi shankar so rishi kumar pandya went as a student as annapurna devi and then they fell in love and then they married each other rishi kumar pandya was responsible for me to leave my corporate life and take a jump to uh, you know uh come for consulting because he asked very difficult questions he said he asked two very uh very important questions he said what makes you happy number one how much money is enough for you to be happy in life he said you answer these two questions and then your life is set very difficult questions what makes you happy how much money is sufficient for you to be happy very difficult question so Rish, i would like to i would love to live his life all over again so that i'll touch more lives and change people yeah yes okay if you were to meet the almighty or the divine energy as you call it or the universal energy yeah and if you were given a choice to select a superpower what superpower would you select oh that's a very difficult question yeah i would say that you no know, god give me the power to motivate people to reach their potential you know for them to realize the potential there are no limitations limitations are actually made in the head so i would ask god god give me the power to motivate people to come out to their fullest potential especially women i am a champion for women there is so much power in women you know there is nothing that they cannot do the reason why i supported my wife she was just a village you know girl when i married she did uh, you know three ms she did a phd after marriage after children you know women have so much potential and i feel that most of my teammates in my corporate life has been the most successful people have been women because they are very focused they don't have much distractions so i would i would i would ask god give me some some super women you know who will go all out and then show others everything is possible yes excellent that's wonderful sir yeah. till date the most important and precious gift that you've ever received oh that has been i think uh, rishi kumar pandya's questions in my life because he asked the, the the most important questions he asked me two questions one is what makes you happy do that number two how much money do you need to be happy right so these two uh, this was the biggest gift i would say late in life 2000 he, i met him around uh, 2005 he did a lot of training for our companies he started asking me these questions i had no answer these because they are difficult questions two difficult questions and around 2017 i decided merko matlab i will have so much money that is sufficient for me because there is no end to money so whatever so this was the best gift rishi kumar pandey gave me yes two questions excellent so that's wonderful sir before we sum up today's session i'd like you to give us either three questions or either three words for us to focus on and rebuild our lives for all those people who have lost it you know the the path or you know the yeah. the light in their life i'd like you to share with us three powerful questions or maybe three powerful words which could create magic in our lives see i i would say that intention versus action you have to understand intention doesn't change anything but you have to act dream and do is number 1 number 2 is learn new things you have to learn new things because the world is changing so fast and uh, you have to learn a new hobby learn a new language travel new places take a phd take a pg you know 
it is all possible you know you, you know it will it is also important to learn new things why because your neural networks will degenerate after some time science says that you will have dementia or parkinsonism all because of your inactivity the more you learn you will actually protect your brain from degeneration so learning new things creates new connections in the corpus callosum which is a joint in between our brain which is important and the third thing is network 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 with the people because networking saves you from decay i think the biggest corporate mistake is inability to understand changes in environment the biggest crime the biggest cardinal sin is inability to understand changes in environment so network will immediately tell you what are the changes in the wind what is happening and the last one do some social work go help somebody contribute join organizations like rotary like lions like freemasons like jci like round table there are hundreds of organizations which help others i think it is our our social responsibility to help others it is not just because of your ability you have succeeded i strongly believe because there are thousands of people my trainees my seniors everybody has helped you succeed so you have a responsibility to give something back to the society you are not an individual because of your individual glory you have succeeded so it is very important so four things you know in conclusion i will say number 1 intention versus action be action oriented not intention oriented the graveyard is full of people with great intentions right learn new things it will help you escape from dementia and you know uh, what you can say parkinsonism maybe network with people because it will save you from uh, un- uh, from what you can say understanding it will help you understand the changes in the environment and number 4 social life you have to give uh, give back to society whatever way it is possible it is very important so these are the two four things ful- fulcrums which i live which i want people to live it is not very difficult to do these things i feel yes thank you very much thank you very much sir for all those yeah. beautiful things that you've just shared with us all the beautiful uh, wisdom that you acquired through all of these years you're sharing it with us and i you are asking us to focus on networking you are asking us to focus on social on being a social activist or maybe a social worker to contribute to the society in a positive way and all of that and not to be like only having intention but put it into action as well that's very nice you've been sharing all of that and i look forward to many more interactions with you sir Uh, thank you very much yes and i, I also... hope that you are going to really share your time with regard to you know uh, about your profession in detail i'd like to have a session with you because there are people who are interested to get t- getting to know how to be coached in the right way by the right kind of business coach and how they could connect with people and as you said you know to dealing with customers that's one very difficult task that many uh, of them find it difficult in their own personal lives when they are into business or either a sales representative or they could be you know connecting with people yes yes it could be a doctor it could be you know they are called as clients so absolutely yes so it's like people skills actually yeah people, people skills. skills are more important that is your eq is more important than your knowledge and skills I, very true yeah, yeah okay So I'd like to take a promise from you that you would share your time once more on the international fab talks and enlighten all of us in the. Thank near you very much, uh, Crystal, and it has been very nice talking to you. I hope some people will benefit from these tips which I have shared, and I wish you a wonderful uh, day ahead. And thank you very much once again. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Stay blessed and stay connected. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Yeah. Thanks. My dear friends, with this we come to an end to the international fab talks for today. We'll be connected with you very soon, and of course, we will request Sir to be with us once again to share his expertise because he has a lot of knowledge, a hidden treasure within him. Thank you very much. Stay blessed. Do share this video with the people who really deserve to watch this video, and of course, if you like what we are doing, stay connected with us. Like, comment, and subscribe as well. Stay blessed. Thank you, Sir. Good night.